In this corncast, we're going to use the square root method to solve quadratic equations. In example 1, we're going to solve this following quadratic equation for x. Now before we look at this algebraically, let's just think about this common sense like. What can I square to give me 9? Well, I know that if I take 3 squared, that's going to give me 9. But think to yourself, is there anything else that I can square to get 9? You guessed it. If we square negative 3, we will also get 9. So there ends up being two answers for this particular problem, 3 or negative 3. Now let's take a look at how to find these solutions algebraically. In order to solve this equation for x, we must take the square root of both sides to solve this equation for x. Now the reason why we need to take the square root of both sides right here is that we know that x squared is really x times x. And that equation is equal to the square root of 9 still. Now if you recall from the simplifying of square roots, we know that if we have a pair of numbers inside the square root, we know that we can now take that pair of numbers out as a single number. So the square root of x times x is going to give us x. So now we have solved for x by using a square root. Now the square root of 9 is going to give us 3, and in this case it ends up being a positive 3. Now if you remember from our common sense component of this, 3 was one of our answers. Now, one of the answers that was not represented was this minus 3. So we also have to think to ourselves, well, we need to include x equals negative 3. And oftentimes this is the one that people forget. So when solving these equations algebraically, please remember that uh, you're going to get two answers, x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. Now, mathematicians have a fancy way of writing this scenario right here. Instead of writing two answers like that, we like to write one answer, x equals. And we have a symbol for representing this plus or minus right here. It's called the plus or minus symbol. And basically it's a plus sign on top of a minus symbol. Now since both of them are threes, we're going to get x equals plus or minus three. So this is the way we like to write our answer for solving this particular equation right here. When solving the equation using square roots, Please remember the plus or minus symbol. In example 2, we're going to solve the following equation for x. Please recall that when solving any equation for x, you must perform your operations in reverse. So if you remember, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So when solving equations, we must take care of the addition and subtraction first. So when solving this equation, we must subtract 1 from both sides first. When we subtract 1 from this left-hand side equation, it leaves us with 2x squared. When we subtract 1 from the right-hand side, we're left with 16. Now the next operation we must take care of is the multiplication division. So we must take care of this 2 times x squared. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 cancels to 1. 1 times x squared is x squared. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. Now the next operation we need to take care of in our order of operations is our exponents. Well, as an example 1, in order to solve for x, we must take the square root of both sides of my equation. Now the square root of x squared is x and we get square root of 8. Now because we use the square root to solve, please don't forget your plus or minus square root of 8. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, huh, I can simplify the square root of 8. I know the square root of 8 is really the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Well the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. So I end up reducing the square root of 8 as 2 times the square root of 2. So my final answer for the solution for this particular equation is x equals plus or minus 
And instead of uh, square root of 8, it's really going to be rewritten as 2 root 2. So my final answer is x equals plus or minus 2 root 2. In example 3, we're going to solve this equation for x. Now again, we're going to undo the order of operations in order to solve. So we must account for this multiplication, this squared, and now we have a set of parentheses. So the first thing that we must undo is this multiplication by one-third. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of one-third, which is three. Three times one-third is one. One times the quantity x plus five squared is the quantity x plus five squared. Seven times three is 21. Now before I can um, take care of what's inside the parentheses, I must now take care of my exponent. So to undo the squared, I must take the square root of both sides. Now the square root of quantity x plus 5 squared is just x plus 5. Now because we use the square root to solve, we're going to have to remember our plus or minus and the square root of 21. Now, the square root of 21 cannot be simplified, so that's as far as I need to take that radical. Now, to solve for x, all we have to do is subtract 5 from both sides. And that leaves us with x equals. We have now successfully solved for x. Now, if you notice on the right-hand side of our equation, notice that we have unlike terms. We have a negative 5 and a square root of 21. And if you remember from your addition and subtraction of radicals, we cannot add or subtract unlike terms. So my answer is going to be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 21. And again, in order to add these, the negative 5 would have to be multiplied to square root 21 in order to perform that operation. Since it doesn't, there's our final answer. Please note that in our answer, we really have two answers. We really have x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 21. Or we really have x equals negative 5 minus the square root of 21. So please be aware that when we get our answer like this, that we really have two answers right here. Finally, let's solve this equation for x. Now again, I'm going to undo my order of operations to solve for x, so that means I'm going to have to add 2 to both sides of my equation. So on my left-hand side, that's going to leave me with 1 half times quantity x minus 3 squared is equal to, well, 2 plus 2 is 4. Now I need to take care of my multiplication by 1 half here, so I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. What I do to one side of my equation, I'm going to do to the other. Well, 2 times 1 half is 1. 1 times quantity x minus 3 squared is quantity x minus 3 squared. And lastly, 4 times uh, 2 is 8. Now I can bring my attention to my exponent. So in order to get rid of my squared right here, I need to take the square root of both sides of my equation. Now the square root of x minus 3 squared is going to give us x minus 3. Now again, when we use the square root to solve, we need to remember our plus or minus. And we remember that the square root of uh, 8 is really simplified to 2 square root 2. Now the last thing I have to do is add 3 to both sides of my equation. And that leaves me with x equals. Now again, 3 and 2 root 2 are unlike terms, so I cannot add or subtract those. So my final answer is going to be 3 plus or minus 2 root 2. And that's my final answer. Well folks, that's it for solving quadratic equations using the square root method.